Okay, uh, thank you everybody for joining us for today's webinar, Continuous Testing of Containerized Applications. Uh, we are having two presenting companies today, Blaze Meter and CodeFresh. We are very excited that you can be here. Uh, just a few announcements uh, before we get going, um, before I turn things over to our first presenter. Uh, the webinar today is being recorded. And everybody who is attending and signed up will receive the full recording over the next few days. Um, you can also, we will have time at the end of the webinar, about 10 minutes or so worth for uh, questions. Uh, you can ask questions in the questions box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, we'll try to get to as many questions as possible. I'm not sure if we'll get to every single one, but try to keep them as on topic as possible, and we'll do our best to get to uh, as many as possible. Uh, finally, at today's, uh, the end of the webinar today, or when you leave, you'll be prompted just to fill out a short 30 second survey um, about today's webinar. It really helps to get your feedback, it helps us to get your feedback and how we can make these webinars even better. Um, and so if you can just take 30 seconds at the end of today's webinar to please fill out the survey, we would truly appreciate it. Uh, our presenters today are Raziel Tabib, co-founder and CEO of CodeFresh. He will be presenting in one second. And then later on, we're going to hear from Brian Matheson, the senior sales engineer at BlazeMeter. Okay, so uh, with that said, I'm going to turn things now over to Raziel. And Raziel, I am going to make you the presenter. Thank you, Jason, um, and hi, everyone. So, um, quick few words about what we will see in the uh, in the webinar and the agenda for today's webinar. Um, we will be starting by talking about the shifting testing to the left. Uh, why do we want to shift test to the left? What are the challenges that we uh, might face when we um, attempt to shift testing to the left? Um, after that, I will be giving a quick introduction to the Codefresh platform. Um, what can be done in the Cosmos platforms, how we can um, configure our application to run and test at, on the Cosmos platforms. Um, after that, uh, Brian will give an introduction to BlazeMeter and to the open source project uh, Taurus. Um, it will be followed by um, a live demo of how we can configure Taurus to run GMeter test and then how we can integrate the GMeter tests um, executed by Taurus as part of the continuous integration pipeline on the Codefresh platform. Then, as Jason mentioned earlier, we will have um, time for question and answer in the end. So without any further ado, um, let's talk about uh, the shifting testing to the left. Uh, what we see here is a typical scenario when, when we are looking at the different stages of our development pipeline. In a typical scenario, the first time that our code changes are uh, being tested for integration, being tested for performance, uh, uh, being reviewed by the team, is actually as part of the staging phase, uh, which in many cases cause a bottleneck of changes pending, pending to come to the staging phase. And also, it's increased the cost of fixing issues when they're found on the staging case, on the staging phase. Um, this is also more likely to happen when our applications are, are what we call the microservices type of an application, when the ability to really test our code changes in the full context of our application is, is only at the staging phase. Uh, but in fact, what we would like to do, and this is what we will demonstrate today, is being able to run this set of tests, integration tests, uh, feature preview, uh, performance tests, much earlier in the life cycle before our code changes hit the staging. So the likelihood of finding issues at the staging uh, phase is going to be significantly lower than, than when we test it for the first time in staging. A few words about Codefresh. Um, so Codefresh, um, uh, we, we offer a container platform for development team. We're basically allowing teams to uh, build, run, and test uh, Docker images 
and then once your Docker images, once your containers are ready, we're allowing you to easily deploy the containers to uh, um, any cloud, whether it's private cloud or, or public cloud. Um, as mentioned earlier, my name is Razia Tabib. I'm the CEO and co-founder. My Twitter handle is at uh, um, Razia Tabib. And you can find more info um, about us on the uh, www.codfosh.io. Few words about what we, what I will be demonstrating now. So we're going to see how we can set up a very simple um, application, um, very simple microservices type of an application, on top of the uh, Codefresh platform. We'll see how we can first configure it, manually test it, and then how we how we can set an automated pipeline to test the application each time we're making a commit or a pull request. A few words about the application itself. Uh, we're going to take a simple application um, that is called Let's Chat and a um, few backgrounds about the application. So the application is actually composed of two containers. One of them is a uh, um, container that runs a Node.js um, service. This Node.js is available on GitHub and the other container will simply run a MongoDB. So the application in order to run needs to have both Mongo and Node.js, and then we'll see how uh, it can be configured, run, and tested in the Codefish platform. So I'll switch to the uh, demo. So here I'm at the login screen to Codefish, uh, um, in which we can log in with um, GitHub, Bitbucket, or on-premise Git. Uh, for our demo today, I will log in with the GitHub option. Once we log in, this is a, a, a blank account. There is nothing configured. It we start. We'll start by adding the services of our application. And as we mentioned, we have a Node.js service. So we click on the Add Service button. We will choose the Git repository. After choosing the Git repository, we'll specify if our um, repository already has a Docker file. Docker file is a file that describes how to package our code inside a container. Um, if we don't have a Docker file, we can take the basic templates and edit them. Um, the best practice is to have a Docker file as part of your Git repo. Then we click on the Next button, and then when we, when we click on the Create, basically what happens now is that Codefosh will start by building the, um, the Docker image for our first service of our application. Uh, we can track the building progress itself, so if I click on it, we can see the building process. Um, for the first time of running it, this might take a minute or so. So I will walk you through the other model of the platform. And then we're going to be back here to see the Docker image after uh, the build process will complete. So this is the services. Here is where we define the services of our application. Here is where we can define the pipeline. Um, what are the set of steps that are going to be executed each time we modify one of the service? In the composition, this is where we define the links between the different services. Um, so in a typical microservices type of an application, a service, in order to be fully tested, has to run with additional services. So we will define it here uh, very shortly. Builds, this is where we monitor all the builds. Um, we monitor all the pipelines. So whenever uh, one of the services is being uh, changed, whether it's by uh, um, a pull request or a commit, um, we will be able to track the progress of the um, pipeline. And we will be able to track here if all the tests pass, or if not, what are actually the steps that failed um, as part of the process. Images. So all the Docker images uh, will can be stored in your Docker registry, and I will show how it can be configured to push the Docker images to a Docker registry. But we can still see all the Docker images here. We will see the Docker image. We will see if we all the tests that this Docker image has to pass have actually passed successfully. We will be able to run this Docker image to be able to test it manually and so. And in the environment model, that's where actually when we want to run a Docker image to uh, be able to test it manually or to be able to run it and share with the team, uh, share our feature up front and get feedback, 
we will be able to see it um, running here and we'll be able to slack a link to it to the team and get comment on how on the feature before we even promote it to um, staging. Okay, let's go back and look at the build. So the build has now been completed. Um, and if we go here to the image, we can see that uh, there is image that we've just created. In fact, the image at this point has only a limited info, such as the code commit um, that created that image, the Docker file that we use for that image, um, the logs that were accumulated while we uh, built this Docker image. If we will want to go and run this image, in fact, we will see that um, Kotosh will allow us to run it as a standalone or as a part of composition. As I mentioned earlier, our demo chat application cannot run as a standalone, so let's create a composition and then come back here and run it as part of the composition. So we'll go to the composition module, we'll click on the Add New Composition, we'll give it a name. In this case, let's chat. And then let's add our services. So we'll add the first service. For those who are familiar with Docker Compose, you can see that Codefosh will now start auto-create for us a Docker Compose file. Uh, we can even add and configure the port of our service. We can add services that are not necessarily code-based. So we can add any Docker image that is coming from a registry. In this case, let's add Mongo, as we talked about. And here we have our um, first composition. If we expert in Docker Compose, we can basically click on the Edit button here and go and, and modify it uh, directly, directly here. Uh, now once we save this composition, if I'm going to go back to the image and I want to run my code and see how my code behaves, I can click on the Launch button and then click on the uh, Run it as part of a composition. Let's chat in this case. And then what will happen now is Codefosh will take that Docker image and will run it now as part of this composition. So that will take a few more seconds, but when this process ends, we will be able to see our application running and the two containers, and that's actually uh, um, reinforced for us that we have set the application right here. So here it's completed. If I click on the link here, we can see um, the Let's Chat application up and running. I can go to the environment. We can see that we've just spin up this environment. There are two containers running in this environment. This is the um, standard output within each one of these containers. So we know everything everything's works properly. So after the very first setup of our application, let's see how we can configure um, the pipeline and the set of, te of uh, um, steps and tests that will run each time we're making a change to our services. So let's go back to service, and when I click on a service, I can see the pipelines. I can set uh, a multiple pipeline for each one of the service. If we're looking at the default steps that a pipeline uh, um, has, we can see the build and unit test, we can see integration test and deploy. These are the default one. Obviously, if you have many more steps that you want to run, security test and so on, um, you can use the um, YAML file option that allows you to put in the uh, in a YAML file um, a customized pipeline that include additional steps and have this YAML file as part of your repo. In that case, again, your pipeline can be fully customized with as many steps. For the demo of today, we'll just use the, the default one. So if I come to the build and unit test, I can basically come and say add gulp test. And if I save the pipeline now and run it again, we can see that right after building the Docker image, Codefosh will start running the, um, the unit test. So here the unit test all passed. We can see that there is another build at the build modules. And if we're looking at the image, we can see that the image also marked now as also the test pass. So we're adding more and more metadata to the Docker image so we can show that you know, the Docker image passed all of these steps before we're promoting it to production. Uh, before I will hand it um, over to Brian, I will show that one of the key capabilities and link it back to the uh, um, shifting test to the left. One of the key capabilities that, uh, that we have as part of configuring the pipeline is that now when we know how to run the full application, how we, kn we know how to run the Docker image 
together with the uh, um, other services that needs to run with it, for each one of the steps, whether it's unit tests or integration tests and so on, we can specify to Codefresh, run these tests, but run these tests while you run our Docker image inside a composition. So we can basically go back, let me show you here, go back and tell Codefresh when you run the test already here, run our code changes in the full application context and then run the test against it. So already at this stage, we can identify if we break the integration test, we can identify if there is a degradation in performance and so on uh, before we've actually promoted our code changes to the staging environment. With that saying, um, I will um, hand it over to you, Brian, to show, talk about Taurus, BlazeMeter, and how we can integrate it with the Codefresh platform. Great. Thanks, Raziel. I'm just going to switch over to me and share my screen out here. And uh, now we're going to talk about how to use this great uh, build framework to incorporate a uh, performance test into the integration test phase. Um, but first, a little bit about BlazeMeter and uh, the Taurus test execution utility. Um, BlazeMeter is a uh, it's a platform for executing load tests at scale and also for uh, for reporting on load tests that you're executing locally. Um, we can use load generators uh, in the cloud, whether it's a uh, uh, public cloud load generator or whether it's a, a, uh, a load generator in your VPC or in your, uh, your internal cloud. Um, and uh, we provide very intuitive reporting on the, uh, the result set that comes back from the, from the load test. Um, BlazeMeter has a sort of an open source DNA and allows you to run uh, tests that are developed in a wide variety of, of different open source applications. So uh, really any test material that you, uh, that, that you might want to run as an integration or a load test um, uh, can be executed using the Taurus uh, test execution utility. So what's Taurus? Taurus is a, uh, it's a command line utility as well as a YAML um, uh, specification, domain specific language actually for, uh, for defining load tests and performance tests. You can use it to, uh, to execute existing load tests that you've developed, um, or you can define your own load tests based in the CML uh, domain specific language, which is what we're going to focus on. Um, and you can also run multiple tests in parallel with it, so it's suitable for, for combining tests that have uh, different strengths. So in order to develop our test uh, that, we, uh, that we wrote against the Let's Chat uh, composition, uh, we use the, uh, the BlazeMeter extension to Chrome, which allows us to record all the requests that we send up from the web browser. Now this is a very easy way to get started on, on developing a test script, um, and it's very easy to export this in, uh, in a variety of formats, including in JMeter. Um, I chose to export it in JMeter because uh, JMeter has a great deal of functionality for test development uh, when you're working with it in real time, and I wanted to capture uh, certain elements of the application that, uh, that, that are easiest to do when you can inspect the response data. So in order to use this recorder, um, you just go add the extension to Chrome, open it up and click the record button to start the capture, capture all the requests from the browser and navigate through the app to, uh, to, to build out the test plan really. And then, uh, and then you just uh, stop the recorder and, uh, and export it to uh, a JMX format for opening up in uh, JMeter. Now JMeter here pictured on the right um, uh, is, a, is a great tool for, uh, for developing load tests. Um, and, uh, and what I was, what I was able to do by opening it up in JMeter and, uh, and, and you know, just running the test a few times was find some places where the script needed some parameterization. And so, so I used JMeter to parameterize the script and to, uh, to, to include uh, uh, a CSV file 
that allowed me to specify what uh, what what those variables contain, um, such that each thread would contain a unique set of user login information. Uh, the workflow that I that I developed the test around was simply creating an account, logging into the application, and uh, and then logging back out again. Um, so so very very simple performance test, um, but uh, illustrative of uh, of of a, a sort of a common test workflow. Now, because of the CSV file, um, uh, I'm able to specify a fairly large number of accounts. And, uh, and, and I, can, I can have unique account information for each line in the CSV file that gets applied to each thread or each iteration of a thread, uh, such that I don't create duplicate accounts within the chat client. Um, I'm also using post processors to capture session tokens which uh, because of the way the application is designed are, are uh, uh, required in, in, uh, in, in input data that's subsequent to the, to the initial uh, account creation and login. Um, and then I was able to use JMeter to test the script against an instance of the app running in CodeFresh's uh, uh, container cloud. So then what I did is I converted this into Taurus YAML. And I did that because Taurus YAML provides for an easy way to extend and, uh, and, and maintain the script without having to open it up in JMeter. Um, with Taurus YAML, it's very easy to, uh, to understand the, the way the scenario breaks down. And it's very easy for other developers within the, uh, within the organization to modify the test script at the same time as they're modifying the application. So what I've done is I've used the JMX to YAML utility to convert the JMeter file into an initial YAML um, uh, an initial YAML test specification, and then I've trimmed out some of the extraneous uh, uh, information. Uh, for example, the uh, recorder will capture all the uh, all the request headers, and I've trimmed those out for uh, for readability because uh, our application doesn't happen to to, to care about those headers. Um, so the resulting file uh, is, uh, is very straightforward. Uh, you can see that there's an execution section. Oops, I've lost my slides here. Uh, there's an execution section which defines the concurrency with which the test runs and the number of iterations the test runs over. Now this is a short number of iterations for a couple of reasons. Um, uh, one practical reason in that um, I, I have to specify each account in a CSV file, and so I only have 200 pre-built accounts um, uh, or pre-allocated accounts that I'm going to populate the database with um, uh, as part of the test run, and then um, uh, so so I can run 20 concurrent users at 10 iterations each and fill out all 200 of those uh, entries, um, and uh, and after the execution section we're defining the scenarios, which are really how we're interacting with the application. Um, we're defining a default address, and this default address is chosen to be the same as the, uh, the name in the composition file, uh, such that the, uh, the, the Taurus container is able to reach the application uh, you know, just, just using static host mappings that way. Um, uh, you can see that I've defined the data sources and included my uh, my CSV file in the uh, in the repository for the container, and I've defined the requests, um, uh, including a post to uh, uh, to to the server to create an initial account. Um, that's the registration uh, operation. Um, I, I've included a uh, uh, a login operation which sends up the same password that it uh, created the account with. Um, and uh, and and also um, uh, include some other requests that are that are important to capture as part of the uh, um, uh, you know execution flow in order to exercise the app accurately. And then I've I've uh, I've captured a request to the actual application itself now that we've logged in. And uh, and and in this in this request we're getting back a uh, session token where I'm using a regular expression extractor to extract that token and, uh, and, and then replay it in, a subsequent re in subsequent requests. So you can see here this, uh, this regular expression is going to capture 
this particular value um, uh, and, and it's going to um, uh, store it in a variable called SID. And then we can, we can in, in the, the subsequent transactions, reference this SID variable um, to, uh, to identify our, ourselves to the application. Sorry about that. So um, uh, at the end, we, we go ahead and log out. And, uh, and you know, um, uh, there's uh, some other sort of housekeeping uh, configuration elements there as well. Um, so uh, with that, um, uh, uh, we have our uh, performance test script ready to go. So what do we do with it? Well, we put it in a container. And we run that container along with the uh, uh, the build of the Let's Chat uh, application. Um, so, so in order to do that, we've created a Docker file uh, that uh, that will build us a Taurus uh, Docker image, and uh, and and that's very straightforward. If you're familiar with Docker files, you can see that we're just basing it on uh, the latest Debian um, and. Uh, and we're installing uh, Taurus, which is uh, uh, it's pronounced Taurus, but it's spelled DZT, um, uh, via the pip install command. And then uh, we're going to uh, run the uh, uh, BZT command using the YAML file that we've defined with the minus report option. And uh, also, as you'll see later, some other options to control the, uh, the, the test execution. So, so with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna go go ahead and demonstrate how this pipeline works in in uh, within CodeFresh. So we have our demo chat application, and let's take a closer look at at what we've done here. Um, as uh, Raziel pointed out, you can you can specify uh, um, a, uh, a a GitHub location to uh, to pull the material from. Um, and so so with that as a base, we've added an integration test. And uh, and the integration test is very straightforward. I simply uh, ping the uh, AUT system uh, to uh, to make sure that it's up, and then uh, run BZT, which is the Taurus execution binary, uh, with the let's chat uh, YAML file, a minus report option, and also a blaze meter token which associates this test run with an account. Now the minus report combined with the uh, the, the token allow BlazeMeter to render the, the test results in a, an easy to understand graphical format. Um, and then we also specify a name for the test as well. And, uh, and we're going to go ahead and run this and take a look at how the test executes. And I'll kick this off now. And we can see the familiar uh, uh, workflow of, uh, of of building and running the containers, and then we're going to run the integration test by uh, 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 creating the uh, the Taurus container, and uh, um, we should start getting results here momentarily. So while we wait for that to come in. Um, I'm going to come over to the BlazeMeter interface and uh, and and show just very quickly that we we've already have um, some subsequent test runs, and you can see that we're charting the uh, the results of those runs over time. Now this this can help us uh, this kind of trending chart can help us determine whether there's been a uh, a significant change in the response time. Uh, from one build to the next, um, and that's really critical in terms of of being able to determine uh, uh, whether or not we need to um, maybe tighten up the login procedure or the registration procedure. Um, and uh, let's check back in on this. You can see that the test is running currently, and we'll come back over and take a look at the results now. So. You can see the results are, are are streaming in from the container that's running the Taurus application, and uh, that we're showing some KPIs related to this load test. Um, in particular, the number of virtual users that we're running with, uh, the the average throughput uh, that the requests are are seeing uh, through to the application, an error rate, 
the average response time, which is the average across all of the, all of the requests in this case, uh, as well as the 90th percentile response time, and the amount of bandwidth that's being used by the, uh, by the traffic generator. And we're pl plotting these KPIs on a couple of different graphs. Um, one of the throughput to uh, uh, the throughput against the maximum number of users and uh, error percentage. And also, we're plotting the response time against the number of virtual users. Now, if we want more details on uh, maybe on particular transactions or uh, particular requests within the test, we can dig into them uh, using the timeline report and the load reports. So maybe we're not quite so interested in the throughput, um, but, uh, but we do want to see how the registration operation is, uh, is doing in terms of response time. So we can come in here and dynamically build a graph of the response time and immediately see that it's you know, in, the, in the three to five second range. And if we need to drill down into any of these results, it's very easy to do so. Um, by uh, by dragging over a, a specific area of the graph, and if we need these results in tabular format, that's available as well on the request stats tab. And uh, and if we need to share these results out with another software developer, it's very easy to get a shareable link that we can uh, paste into Slack, and and uh, and and our teammates can analyze the test results right along with us. So uh, very easy workflow, um, and uh, and again, um, the trending graph that, uh, that that's provided uh, across subsequent runs can also be very valuable in terms of determining whether or not uh, the application is meeting its SLAs. So uh, that's that's really it for the for the demonstration portion of the uh, of of the, the webinar. Um, and at this point, I would invite you, if you haven't already, to uh, to go go and create a a, a, a BlazeMeter account at www.blazemeter.com, and uh, and and create a CodeFresh account at uh, www.codefresh.io, um, and uh, and and see if this uh, if this can help uh, streamline your build process. Um, to get uh, more information. You can uh, you can find a lot of great details on how to do this or that with JMeter or with Taurus on BlazeMeter's blog, and uh, and you can find out all kinds of great information about containers at uh, CodeFresh.io CodeFresh.io/slash blog. Um, feel free to hit us up on Twitter and uh, and and uh, uh, email our our sales lines as well. So at this point, I'm going to hand it back to Jason to uh, open up the floor for questions. Okay, thank you, Brian. Just one second. Oh, was it to that? Hold on. Okay, I'm not sure why I still have. But um, does anybody have any uh, questions? I see a few here, and I'll just announce them uh, for um, for uh, uh, the people who can't see them, obviously. But um, the first question was, uh, I believe it was actually for Raziel, but I might be wrong. It actually might be for Brian. It was, where did you configure the Node.js container to use the MongoDB container? Okay, so that's... Uh, um that's a question for me. Um, the uh, Node.js repo uh, of the demo chat application is actually um, calling out Mongo. It needs a Mongo component in order to run together. The links between the Node.js and the Mongo containers are being defined in the composition in the Docker Compose um, YAML format. That's where you list all the containers part of your composition. You can list the links and when we run the composition, um, whether it's as part of running it for manual tests or whether it is part of running it for a performance or integration test, we're running it in a way that uh, all of these containers are sharing the very same network and can access each other. Um, you can um, read more on, on it on the Docker Compose um, info, or you can just reach out to us on our blog. We can um, give more information also in our documentation, of how containers can be linked to each other. 
Okay. Uh, Razia, just while you're here on the line also, I'll, I'll ask you actually a few other questions uh, that are CodeFresh uh, specific. Um, one of them is, um, how is CodeFresh different from uh, uh, Docker, Swam, and Chef? And then somebody else also asked how it's different from Jenkins. Okay. Um, so CodeFresh, you know, um, as we've seen, when you set up the continuous integration is, is uh, you know, it can be accomplished also with other continuous integration tools. The main difference are that CodeFresh has been built from the ground up for containers and for Docker images. So it allows you both to um, automate the Docker flow from the commit all the way to production, as well as also being able to do manual testing. Uh, which a typical CI tools do not allow you. So it allows you to run any branch, run any pull request. And that's critical in an agile team when you want to um, share with your colleagues how your feature is working and get feedback before you promote these code changes to staging because um, it's much easier to incorporate feedback and make changes to the code much earlier in the life cycle. So this is a unique offering that um, the CodeFresh platform offer. With respect to Chef um, and Puppet, these are predominantly used for, uh, um, and I say predominantly because there are exceptions all the time, but predominantly used for the deployment to production. With CodeFresh can trigger that, that these scripts um, also for staging, but the added additional value, if you're using Chef and Puppet, additional value that, that CodeFresh does is that it allows you, in addition to staging and production, to spin up on demand staging like environment uh, much earlier and by every developer to test it as we talked earlier um, um, to test it before we get into staging so to shift to the left the testing uh, um, part okay and finally for now just um somebody asked do you need a uh, do you need to have a docker registry account to use code fresh and where do they host the containers so um, if you have a Docker registry account, uh, whether it's public or private, you can connect CodeFresh and the Docker images will be stored in that registry as well, but you don't have to have a registry. So you can work with CodeFresh also as your registry and see all your um, images, pull all your images directly from the CodeFresh platform. So again, you have the options of either or. Okay. Uh, so now for, uh, for Brian, a couple of questions related to uh, Taurus and BlazeMeter. Um, so one of them is, how much extra effort is required to clean up a JMX file into a YAML file for use in Taurus? That's a great question. And, uh, and, and the answer is, it's, it's really quite simple. Um, but it requires a little bit of an understanding of what the app uh, uh, under test uh, requires in terms of uh, in, in terms of interaction. Um, in in my case, I I removed, uh, in in fact, all of the headers, uh, the request headers, from the Taurus YAML file, after converting it into into Taurus YAML, um, and I did that really for two reasons. Um, uh, one reason is that I, I thought it would be more readable for this presentation. Um, but uh, the other reason is that I was I, I you know after having tested it, I was I was certain that the application wasn't relying on any of those request headers uh, in order to, to, to work properly. Um, uh, you, you may have noticed that, uh, that there was a, uh, that we were restoring cookies as part of the test and, uh, and, and, and I do think that there, there were some, uh, uh, some cookies set during the, during the course of the test to track the session. Um, uh, but, uh, but for the most part, those, those, those headers were just, uh, you know, browser identity strings and, and, uh, and, you know, content types that, uh, that, that have same defaults, right? Um, uh, in, uh, in, in the case of, uh, parameterizing the application, uh, that can be, uh, a little bit, there are, there are some tricks that, uh, that, that you learn. Um, uh, you know, mostly through practice, um, and uh, and uh, you know, one of them is how to use the regular expression extractor to uh, to grab that session token when it gets set as a cookie, um, and uh, and and that's that's just uh, uh, 
uh, you know, sort of part of learning JMeter, um, and all very well described on uh, Blaze Meter's blog. Um, uh, and uh, and and all in all, I think maybe it was 15 minutes to get a working uh, 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 Torus script going that ran against this application. Um, but again, this is a very simple test. You know, I'm not. I, I don't want to make it sound like this is a this is a complex uh, uh, thing to do. Okay, um, and then there are also a couple of questions. Um, they're kind of related, so I'll ask them together. Somebody's asking about uh, just if there's a, a free trial version of BlazeMeter. I know that Taurus, I can say, is an open source tool and people can use whenever they want to, but uh, can you talk just very briefly about the free trial version and also related to that, somebody asked if there's a limit of the number of tests you can run in BlazeMeter. So I think it's related to the plan as well. Yes, yes, there is a there's a free account that you can sign up for. Uh, uh, just uh, give us an, an email address that we can contact you at, and uh, and we'll set up an account that's uh, uh, that's able to run up to 50 concurrent users and uh, and and 10 tests a month. Um, in this particular instance, the way that we use Taurus uh, only requires having a JMeter account or a BlazeMeter account. Um, to do the reporting, and so we're not actually executing the test using BlazeMeter's cloud. Um, so, so in in CI environments, you don't you often don't have control over the number of tests that uh, that your 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 environment is running because you're doing a build with every with every commit, right? Um, so, in in this scenario, it's it's uh, it, it works out to be advantageous to to just run the open source Taurus application. Uh, to generate the test traffic from within the uh, the, the the actual Docker composition um, that uh, that CodeFresh is setting up, uh, but the minus report flag is is useful and uh, and 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 also the API token um, uh, to uh, to to be able to analyze the results in a graphical format instead of just you know some text about number of you know successful requests scrolling by. Okay, thank you. A uh, couple of questions for Raziel about uh, CodeFresh. Um, one is actually um, the same person was also asking about uh, if there's a trial version for CodeFresh as well. Yeah, so there is a trial version. Um, for open source project, CodeFresh is free. There is a trial version for um, um, private repos for two weeks. Okay. And try it out. And Give us a feedback, or you know, you can purchase it directly from the website. Okay, great. Somebody also asked which cloud environment, what cloud environment CodeFresh you use while running their services. Uh, great question. Great question. So, uh, when you run it and you running also um, your compositions or your environment on the CodeFresh cloud, uh, behind the scene we run it on both. Um, AWS and cloud depends on, on what you ask, but there is also the options to add your own nodes. So if you want Cotfresh to leverage your own infrastructure for uh, or your own AWS account to run um, integration tests, you know, to spin up the application for manual testing, uh, there is the option to add your nodes to the Cotfresh account, and um, in this way we will actually be leveraging your infrastructure uh, for running the test. So you can both run your environment on our cloud uh, with a choice of either Google or AWS, or you can connect your own account and run it on your own infrastructure. Okay, thank you. One last question for now. Uh, I think that we can take Brian. This is for you. Uh, it's about Taurus. Um, if there's somebody's asking, is there a way to change the Postman collection to the Taurus YAML file? Um, the Postman collection. Um, I I think that I would have to refer you to uh, um, uh, the gettourist.org uh, website to see there are a number of uh, um, uh, there there are a number of, of mechanisms for uh, uh, for um, uh, you know, including other plugins and all that, um, and there are other mechanisms for for converting from uh, various JSON output formats. Um, so if you're able to uh, if you're able to get Postman to, uh, to to save a list of requests, um, 
as as JSON uh, and, and and Taurus is able to read it, um, then uh, then then it should be it should be a simple matter of of specifying that as the configuration file and having that go through a list of uh, um, uh, a list of requests. Uh, but uh, but I don't I don't know whether that those formats the XML form or uh, uh, the JSON format that uh, Postman would output uh, is actually uh, the same JSON as as uh, as what Taurus would read as a scenario uh, uh, you know list of of URLs to hit. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much uh, for everybody who asked questions. Um, and this concludes our webinar. Just before people leave, just a, a quick reminder uh, to please take just 30 seconds to fill out the short survey that's going to pop up as the webinar ends here. It will really help us uh, to gain your feedback and make our webinars even better next time. Also, if you asked any uh, more additional questions about getting a demo, either BlazeMeter or CodeFresh, or specific questions about pricing plans, um, we have your email, but uh, feel free to give that in the survey as well. Um, and we'll get back to you uh, from each side uh, as soon as possible. Uh, finally, thank you again to our presenters today, Raziel Tabib from CodeFresh and Brian Matheson from BlazeMeter. My name is Jason Silberman, uh, and thank you, and have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank you.